Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. In the last video, we used a bunch of these to make a super cool knife. You can check that video out up here, but we still have some of the billet left. So using a rather different procedure from this point on, we're gonna make another super cool knife. So let's get started. In the last project, I used the ball bearing pattern welded Damascus steel billet as a blade all on its own. And if you watch that video, you'll see how that worked. And it worked quite well, actually. In this case, we're going to use the pattern welded Damascus as the centerpiece for the blade, quite literally, because it's going to run down the middle of the blade. That means we need to add some additional steel to the blade, and this actually allows us to make a larger knife than we would otherwise be able to do with this pattern welded steel. This is 80 CRV2 steel, which is 3 8 by 1 and a quarter inch and it's necessary to clean up all surfaces that are going to be forge welded together so there's no corrosion and preferably nothing that causes any kind of gaps. Tack welding it together with the arc welder simply to hold it together while we heat it up to forge welding temperature. I sprayed it down with WD-40 prior to putting it in the forge which helps protect the steel from atmosphere and then once it's about to a red heat adding some borax for the flux and continue to heat it up to a forge welding temperature and then begin setting the welds on the anvil. After the initial setting of the welds I'll be a little more aggressive with the hammer and make sure that we have a good forge weld. So in and out of the forge several times at a forge welding heat and brushing off the accumulated borax. That's rather important to do because you can get a large glob of flux on your billet and then if you go to hammer or run it in the forging press with that glob of partially hardened flux on there you can create an indentation that is quite annoying down the road. At this point I'm getting to where the forge weld should be set well but I'm focusing on the ends of this billet here trying to make sure those are solid. Something that can happen frequently is when you use an arc welder to tack your pieces of billet together no matter how many layers it can affect the forge weld right at that point and a great indication of a failed forge weld is if you see any distinct difference between parts of the billet as it cools down To this point, I haven't done any forging on the flat as you see right here, and that's because I still had those arc weld beads on there. Those needed to be ground out before forging on the flat, or that's just going to be forged down into the blade steel, which we don't want. That's just mild steel on that arc weld bead. As I continue to forge, I notice that, as I mentioned a minute ago, on the end of the billet, there's a spot that did not forge weld right where the arc weld bead was holding things together or apart, I guess you could say. So what I'm doing here was always the plan from the beginning. However, I am doing it sooner than I wanted to, which means the billet or the bar of steel is wider and shorter and thicker than I would have preferred. I decided to cut out this V right at this point because I did not want to continue to forge the billet down with that unbonded section or cold shut right at the end of the billet. That's just simply going to draw it out further. But I made a mistake because this technique here is something I've done at least a couple of times before with great success and it turned out really nice. What I'm doing here though is making a big mistake because this billet is too heavy, too thick, and too hard to move and too hard to hold on to at this stage of the game. If I had forged it out into a nice uh, inch and a half by quarter inch bar, something along those lines, I would be able to hold on to it and I would be able to move that steel a lot easier. Because when you're doing this, this is a, this is a uh, commonly used method of forging in the tip or the end of the blade so that you're completely encompassing that core Damascus steel. But it's difficult to do 
in dimensions that are too heavy like this. Now, I've uh, put a link here in the video to a project where I did this properly and it turned out really nice. But I struggled with this and I'm trying to see if it actually did go together. It seems to have and I, and I went and used the forging press which sort of stretched everything out further than I wanted it to at the tip there. But I thought I had it at this point. So I'm going to go ahead and forge out the rest of the blade starting with the bevel and then working on the spine which is still very thick at this point. Working primarily on the bevel is going to stretch this blade around into a banana shape, but we haven't done much to the spine, and so once we forge that out, it's really going to even things up. Things were looking pretty good. I thought we had it, and I thought it was going to turn out all right. I was going for another another hidden tang style blade, like a small buoy or a fighter style, something along the lines that we did the first time, but here we go. We've got a cold shut. We've got a spot where the forge well did not work. And I did not baby this as I was forging it because, in my opinion, at this point in the game, if you have to baby the forge weld, then it's simply not a good forge weld. So I just lopped it off. I just cut that whole piece off. That's going to affect the style and the uh, final features of this blade. But we're not going to scrap it. We can still make a good blade here. So I'm transitioning to a full tang construction here stretching out this bit of material using the power hammer to get that thinned down so we have the length that we need. And now I'm going to forge a cool, uh, we're going to go with something like a kitchen barbecue style knife, something that you can use for specifically uh, carving up meat, different things like that, a nice slicey blade. Stretching out the spine here, thinning it down, we're going for a much thinner uh, spine thickness on this new uh, version of the blade than we were orig originally going to do. Pulling that edge steel around and there we go. It's sort of reminiscent of the Green River Skinner or Mountain Man style blade but much larger I believe. And now for a series of heat treating processes to get this steel into an excellent condition. And then we will harden the steel by quenching it in quenching oil. And then finally temper it. Once the blade has been completely heat treated, we can begin the grinding process. Of course the bevels have been forged in so there's not a lot of grinding to do. But we do need to clean up the profile, beginning with the edge, because we do not want any of the decarburized steel left on the edge. Using the classic KMG grinder to complete this task. And I've got my air purification system set up here. The uh, filter pack is actually located outside of my plastic sheeting grinding booth here. It's a continual problem it seems like. The booth that I created does keep most of the dust from migrating throughout the shop and settling on everything, but it also creates a very concentrated environment for any kind of uh, air breathing protection. And so I'm still kind of trying to figure that whole system out. We've got the blade finished ground and the hand sanding process begins. Of course, since this is going to be etched in ferric chloride, we've got to get the blade up to a good finish. And right before we go into the ferric chloride, I've got the maker, my maker's mark etched on there, and we'll get this blade cleaned up, degreased, and into the ferric chloride. using some nice desert ironwood handle scales for this blade. Nice classic look, great looking uh, desert ironwood there. I think it goes well with this uh, knife design and the overall blade shape. The goal is to get the handle as close to finished as possible before you leave the grinder. The more that you can do on the sanding belt, 
the better your time input is going to be on a given project. Some hand sanding, of course, is unavoidable, but the less you have to do, the better, in my opinion. I'm using a 220 grit J weight soft belt to finish this up here, and that gets me pretty close, and I can finish hand sanding out to 500 grit on the desert ironwood handle, the spine, and the tang. Even though it's a bit cumbersome, I still end up wearing my air purification system for sanding the desert ironwood. Just breathing a little bit of that will get you sneezing, that's no fun. Despite the fact this is not the knife I set out to create, it still turned out pretty cool, I think, and I'm gonna show you pictures of it in just a second here. But first, a cut test. If you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave a comment, subscribe, all that great stuff. I appreciate it. And we will see you on the next video. We have a sharp, slicey knife. This long, thin angle here is going to be great for slicing through barbecue, etc. It's going to be a great little knife for somebody. Got a paper towel tube here. And we'll set it right here on the corner of the anvil. Now, this tests two things. It tests the sharpness of the edge, but also the cutting clearance. And so the thinner your knife is overall, the better it should perform in cutting whatever it is that you're working on. So, um, I could get some momentum up here, but the closer that I can cut right to this tube here, the better cutting clearance and sharper edge I have. So that's pretty good. Pretty, pretty uh, gradual angle on that here. So you can see we've got a pretty good blade here. Actually, we could even go closer. You get the idea.